Greetings, citizens of Nerdtropolis. Sean Todd here, the mayor of Nerdtropolis, and my guest today is Eli Roth, the director of the horror film Thanksgiving. Hey, Eli, it's a real pleasure to finally meet you. Nice to meet you, Sean. I'm a big fan of your work. Uh, I remember sneaking into theaters to watch the first Hostel film, and I obviously had a blast with that. Very cool, very cool. And first off, I have to tell you that Thanksgiving is the Nerdtropolis horror movie of the year. So congratulations on that. I will be sending you something special, very special award your way. But um, yeah, what a fantastic film Thanksgiving is. Awesome. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. It was a long time in the making, but it was really, really nice that the fans came out and supported, you know, a new mythology, a new killer, a new thing, and really gave it a shot in theaters. So that was that was huge. Yeah, everyone loved it. And I spoke to your stars, Milo and Nell, who are amazing in this. Can you tell me what you saw in them that made you want to cast the two of them? Well, Milo Mannheim, um, I knew his mother, I know his mother, Cameron Mannheim, very well. She's an old friend. So I I was there when Milo was born, but we didn't really know each other until he he grew up. And I'd see him when he was 10. He's like, ah, you know, so he has no memory of me, but I remember him. Um, and then I was going to actually produce a movie that Milo was going to star in. So he was on my radar as an actor. And, you know, I real I just kept thinking him for this part. I knew that he would be right. But, you know, I also knew this was like a low budget movie. And did he want to do it? And Milo's like, absolutely. You know, he, he he's like the way Patrick Dempsey wanted to break out of romantic comedy. Milo, I think, you know, as much as Disney's been great to him, wants to show that, you know, he can be in an R-rated adult. Other kind, you know, there's another side to him, many more sides to him. He's a superb, superb actor and just a, one of my favorite people. Uh, and Nell Verlack, you know, she just sent in her audition. You know, it's, it's one of those things where everyone's sort of remote casting um, because of COVID and because of other reasons. So you, you want to, uh, it's hard. You want to see people in person, but, I, I, you know, it's hard to tell from a tape. So I had kind of missed her the first time. And it was actually Jeff Randell, my co-writer and producer, who went through 500 tapes because we didn't, we hadn't landed on our Jessica. Everyone that we liked, there was something that was just a little not 100%. And we were really stressing out. And he's like, what about Nell Verlack? What did you not like about her? I'm like, I don't know. I mean, maybe I just was bleary eyed. And I went back and I rewatched her tape. I'm like, actually, she's perfect. Um, and sort of knowing once we landed Nell, we could cast, you know, Jalen Thomas Brooks and, you know, Tommaso, kind of Addison Ray. Like, I didn't know who the friends were going to be. You have to kind of center it around, you know, around uh, Jessica. But Nell just blew me away in her audition. And she's an incredible, incredible actor. She's like a young Julia Roberts. There's so much depth to her. She's such a such a superb talent. Um, and it was fun to like have a total discovery. Look, I had that with Anna de Armas and Knock Knock and even Julia Garner in the last Exorcism sequel. So there's there's sometimes you see someone you're just like, or Cami Marone, who I knew, I just knew for put her in Death Wish in her first role. So sometimes you just see someone and you and you just know. Uh, and that was the case with Nell. She's a, she's an incredible talent. Yeah, I was excited to see her. I was a big fan of the show Big Shots and seeing her in that. I was like, this this girl's going somewhere. And to see her on Thanksgiving, I was like, she's just getting started. And yeah, she is the face of this fan franchise. I love it. Uh, I've been waiting for this film since I saw that Thanksgiving trailer during Grindhouse, that double feature, which is amazing. Was mm -hmm. it always supposed to be a real deal movie or were you just messing with us back then? Well, when I was 12, you know, Jeff and I grew up in Boston and we were watching you know, waiting for the Thanksgiving slasher film, because obviously Thanksgiving is a huge, huge, huge deal in Massachusetts. So we we're like, how is there no Thanksgiving slasher film? It didn't make sense to us. So we always dreamed of doing one and would talk about all the different kills. So when Quentin and Robert asked me if I wanted to do a fake trailer, I had it. I was like, oh, it's Thanksgiving. I've already got the kills ready. So the thing was basically written when they asked us. So the intent was always to make it a real slasher film. Um, but Grindhouse was so supremely satisfying. We just thought, well, now I don't have to do it. I've already shot the best parts. I don't have to do the, you know, the boring parts of figuring out people talking. Ugh. Just go right to the kills. So, yeah, but then the fans for years were like, well, where is it? Where is it? And I, I, we didn't really know what that movie was because it, it had no plot uh, until we saw all these Black Friday tramplings and the viral videos of people you know, killing each other for waffle irons and electronics. We thought, this is this is interesting. This is a great way to start the movie. It gives you the reason, you know, for that that opening inciting incident that someone goes back a period of time later. I wanted to follow the conventions of holiday slasher films. So it really felt right in there or event slasher films, you know, like My Bloody Valentine, Prom Night, Halloween, Silent Night, Deadly Night. They all kind of follow a certain formula. So 
the fun is taking that structure and then innovating on it in certain ways. Yeah, I loved it. I'm excited that you're working on a follow-up, so I'm excited for that. But I have to ask you, will you ever return to the world of Hostel? Can you take us somewhere else around the world? Uh, maybe yes. take us to Japan uh, and, and visit that. So that's going to happen? Well, I mean, what's, no one knows what's going to happen in the world we're living in. But yes, it's uh, something I'm planning on doing. Let's put it that way. Plans change, but yes, I would love to. I'd love to hear that. Thank you, Eli. You have delivered so many amazing films. Uh, big fan forever. And looking forward to Thanksgiving too, whenever that happens. Awesome. Thanks, Sean. Once again, this is Sean Taj, the mayor of Nertropolis, and stay tuned for more movie news, reviews, interviews, and trailers.